All right, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? Welcome back to another episode of the Remote Closing Academy podcast. And in this one, guys, I am extremely excited to bring this to you, as I am literally every single episode. But this one, it just hits a little bit closer to home. And the reason that I say that is because the guest for today is someone that not only came into the program, you know, put in a ton of work, you know, really, really just went out there and did everything that she did that she could to see success, but was able to get placed in a gig. And that gig is actually with our company closers.io, which is, you know, if you don't know, is, you know, a mixture of remote closing Academy and sales team accelerator. So not to go too deep into that. It's just, it's really awesome to see again, someone that came from no sales experience pretty much at all. And was kind of skeptical at first to then, you know, not only seeing success within the program, getting placed within the company and a little side note, the, uh, the success rate of being hired into closers.io, uh, more people get accepted into Harvard than into closers. So hopefully that gives a little bit of context around her situation and the amount of work that she put in to get to where she is today. So without further ado, let's jump into today's episode with Susan. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Aaron. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm super excited to be here. Excellent. So we'll we'll just jump into it because I'm sure that's um you know I I'm really just interested on on your your overall background. Um. So I guess before we even talk about remote closing academy and and the setter role and and you jumping in there you know head first and and learning and growing as you go along. Um. You know, let's just w- rewind the clocks a little bit. It's what we usually do. Just you know give us a background of like what you were doing before RCA before maybe even sales right like how like how did life look before all that. Um. Life looked uh, pretty boring, I guess. Um, so I moved to Los Angeles uh, eight years ago. I'm from Germany, born and raised there. And I was tired of the culture and uh, yeah, I just didn't like it and needed to have something new. So I moved to LA um, in 2014 and started, I was in school, started designing websites, doing some social media and um, just trying to find myself like what's next so I tried a lot of things and um, didn't really like it and didn't see any um, potential um, liking it in the future for me it's very important to 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 have a passion and liking everything what I do otherwise you're gonna go in a rut right yeah so um and then, yeah, I got married. And uh, last time I, before CA, I worked for a jeweler and uh, as a SEO manager and content creator, and also handled the uh, Instagram account, which I grew from 3,500 to 40,000 organically, which wow. was a huge success. Um, nice. I had no idea what I'm doing, to be honest. I had, he would just ask me, and because before it didn't work out, and then he asked me if I wanted to, and I go, oh, yeah, let me see what I can do. So uh-huh. um, I was reading a lot, listening to other um, Instagram gurus, you know, and then I guess I figured it out. And uh, that's what I like. I like to figure things out, you know, because what else can we do? I just, you always can do anything if you put your head towards the yeah. goal and then um yeah but then I was a year I worked there for a year but I see the world changing and um I have a daughter she's five and I don't don't think that um maybe I'm wrong but I want to be prepared that our children have the same opportunities we have so I was like okay I have to build something build a legacy so she can um access it so I asked a friend on Instagram and he said learn sales I'm like oh gosh (laughs) (laughs) like okay but where do I start where do I go like there's so many gurus you know and he said uh Cole Gordon I'm like okay so the same night I watched this video I um signed up next morning Caitlin um did this interview right the setter um Mm -hmm. and then Matei closed me same day and yeah so I guess it it was I mean one of the from from what it sounds like you made their lives easy That's awesome. I'm, I'm curious because I think, um, you know, most of the people that we've talked to, right. When, when they first hear the, the word sales, like there's almost like this like negative kind of like, uh, like almost like connotation to it. What was your first like reaction when, when this person that you were talking to was like, Oh yeah, get into sales. I, I can't do that. 
I don't want to talk to people. I don't want to force them to buy anything they don't want. Because uh-huh. when I was younger, um, like in my early 20s, I was in sales. I sold like uh, magazines, um, uh, energy, T-Mobile. You know, I didn't mm. like it. It was, it was a, for me, my experience in sales was a bad culture. Mm. I'm like, okay, no, I don't want, and I didn't make any money. So there was no point right so I never heard about high ticket sales and uh but I trusted my friend um and then yeah and then I went to RCA and I heard like you actually help people Mm -hmm. like they have a problem like is it in business or personal development They, they they want the problem to be fixed they want they need help right and at the end we are here to um see if we we are able to help and uh yeah and that's what i liked awesome yeah Yeah, it's cool that you know the the background your your backgrounds in social media have you found like that there's any like crossover between between that and and what you're doing now from like a you know creation standpoint yeah at the end at the end um for me the way i saw it okay i want to know to work in a company i believe in um what they selling the program because at the end um my mind was always, okay, can I promote it? Can I go out there and be the person who presents the company, right? To get the leads, to um, get the word out there. And uh, RCA was like, yes, that's that's what I can do. So I want to implement my reels. I'm a real addict. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, yeah trust me. We're with uh, with running Cole stuff. It's like it's all we're all reels, TikTok, short form content right now, which is I mean, it's it's cool because, it, you know, that's what a lot of these platforms are, are pushing these days to 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 get out there. Um, OK, perfect. So, you know, you you go through through RCA and, and you start going through the program. Where do you think it started to make that sw- like, I guess, almost shift in your head? Because I'm sure like obviously your friend saying like, hey, trust this guy and like that referral kind of like you bringing them in and, and helping you change your mentality a little bit. But what was maybe that, that switch when you were going through, you know, some of the RCA content that was like, okay, like this is something I can get behind. This is something that like, you know, you can have integrity by doing this. Mm-hmm. I think when I went through the courses and to the material and uh, when my coach, Chris, he's awesome. Um, you know, he was, I admire him because he knows we are new and uh, there's no judgment, you know, humans are judgmental, like everyone. And then, um, but you hear the way he talk, like there's no judgment at all. Either he's hiding it pretty well, but yeah. you know, he's very- yeah, I know Chris and he's just, he's a teddy bear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so this, this was like, for me, like, no, they're really serious. They really want to help um, in this program. And I know there are so many other programs. They just want to help. You know, it's a great culture um, to be in. I'm like, okay, I can do this. Honestly, the first two weeks I was like, oh, well, you know, I was working a lot of hours and had my daughter. And then after two weeks, I'm like, what are you doing? Like you sign up for this program mm. because you want to change your life, but you're not doing anything. I'm like, and then the excuses come in. Leia, like, well, you have a lot of going on. Like, well, you have to set your priorities, girl. You know, I always have like those kind of conversations. Internal like, monologue, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then, yeah. And then I started to um, go to each, uh, every uh, Zoom meeting was Chris and then was Tyler as well. Then I signed up for Ascension, which was even better. And um, yeah, just being around um, lions who want to be a better person, who want to do something in their life that has a meaning, right? So that was the change. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even being, you know, in in close proximity to, you know, the people on the team, it's it's really awesome. Like, you know, what's the saying? Like, you you are the five people you surround yourself with, right? Mm -hmm. So the more that you can, you know, if you surround yourself with, a hundred people that are all they want to do is just better the life and, and help other people. Like it's, it's such an easy, like wave to ride, you know, that, that energy I'm sure you've seen with, you know, some of the meetings that, that you've been to on, on the team as well. Um, what would you made to say, or what would you 
say to somebody that you know is kind of in that situation that maybe you were in of because i mean obviously going through the training is one thing but let's say someone's like well i want to start a diet but then they kind of like fall off and and they don't really like have that motivation or you know they say they're going to start their own business and they kind of get distracted with all these uh you know excuses or or things that are coming up in life i mean life happens right so what what i guess helped you maybe kind of like snap you back into like okay i need to like start going through this stuff and, and implement like what was what was kind of the thing the thing that changed for you um i mean the a high self-awareness like what you want you know if you don't know what you want then nobody can help you you, you don't have a direction right so self-awareness is uh is uh, you have to have and then also um don't tell yourself oh i'm going to dive in five hours a day right but you also have to work maybe you have family so for me it was like okay little steps but little steps consistently every day like for me it was important that i show up to the meetings and um, that i ask questions that i listen because at the end when you show up the coaches um they're advocating for you mm -hmm. i don't think without chris i would be in closest.io <laughs> you know, because he was like, no, Sue is, Sue is bleeding for RCA. So um, you just have to show up uh, for yourself and little step consistently will bring you to your goal. Mm -hmm. It's with the diet, like, oh, I'm not going to eat this. I'm not going to eat this. It's too much. You know, today you, you can say, OK, today I'm going to reduce the sugar intake, which is my problem. <laughs> Same. <laughs> for you you just do it for a week you know and then you can go to the next level like you cannot change your life like everything you know it, it doesn't work that way because then you fall back and everything is getting overwhelming and then you're like nah i, I can't do this mm -hmm. so little steps yeah exactly so so speaking of of the little steps you know you, you jump into rca you finally get past that that roadblock of like okay i need to do some stuff um, you know, you jump into Ascension, which you know, we can have a whole other conversation about, but, you know, maybe walk us through kind of like that, that journey for you, um, you know, leading up to maybe, uh, you know, closures.io. And we can even talk about some of the, um, you know, the struggles, maybe some of the, the, the harder parts within the program, like what, what's um, just, yeah, just walk us through kind of that, that process. Right. So um, the harder part for me was uh, doing the mock calls. Um, I was so scared to death. I was so scared. So until I finally set up my Calendly and um, like set up some, some mock calls, it took me, I think, a month. So it's like the fear of not being good enough. And uh, I mean, if you have that, if someone has that, it's okay. It's okay to be scared. It's okay. But at the end, um, you can schedule an appointment with someone else like, for in the next three days so you can prepare yourself mentally and uh, i think that helped me as well and uh, and then i did my first mock call and it was it was not that bad <laughs> you know it, yeah. was, it was okay so um just jump into fear and in, in your fear like face it and uh, you're getting better at it and uh, yeah doing mock calls all the time like probably every day one more call will help and um, even if it's just listening, like being just a prospect, um, that helps too, because then you can sense how the other people talk and which tonality yeah. they use. And uh, yeah, and then in the morning, when, when I uh, woke up, I did like 30 minutes um, dove in like in a material. And um, yeah, and I showed up. For me, it was only important that I show up that I attend every meeting in RCA, in Ascension, and uh, learn and repeat. And uh, yeah, and then I was in a pipeline. Like Chris told me, um, you ready? Um, apply for the pipeline. I'm like, no, I'm not ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So my fear again. So I applied and um, had a great conversation and got an offer, like same day. And um, but I was scared. So I declined it. <laughs> so um, oh, so I, so RCA wasn't the first offer that you no. had got. Oh, got it. No. Okay. I, I why why I, why'd you decline it? Just for just because you you didn't feel like you were ready, or I think the first one I felt I'm not ready. It was my fear not being good enough. 
right? So it was a good offer, but I was, I was scared. I was scared. To death. And then um, I got, um, I think, two more, um, two more offers. But then I understand culture is super important. Like if you cannot align with the culture, for example, the second offer I got um, was so much different. The owner was so much different uh, from the way he, she, uh, she presented herself. Um, I could not see myself because I always was mm. thinking, okay, I'm going to be the one who's also going out there getting leads. So what is her target market? She represents herself in a way, okay, that's her target market. I, I'm not doing that. You know, like I'm not, I'm not, yeah. Oh, he's my car. He's, yeah. he's, he's oh, my gotcha. yeah, yeah. you know, that's, that's not me. I'm like, okay, no, that's not going to work out. And then on the other offers, kind of the same. I think I always had closest.io in my mind. <laughs> I'm like, no, it's not closest.io. <laughs> <laughs> not, not good enough on, on the scale. <laughs> no. So, and then I also went to Germany for a couple of weeks to see my parents. I was planned. I only see them like once a year. And then I took a break and then I came back and then I dove right in and uh, yeah, here we are. Amazing. What's, um, cause I, obviously we're going to talk a ton about, of you know, your experience, even just, just being within the company, but, um, what was maybe some of your favorite parts, we'll say, of, of RCA in general? Um, the fa- my favorite parts was uh, the community. The community in RCA is amazing because they, um, I think almost everyone wants to learn more. They, they, we, co- we connected pretty well. And um, secondly, the coaches. I loved listening to the coaches, uh, everyone, like, especially Tyler and, um, and Chris and Aim and John and all, all, all the, just group. everyone, <laughs> Brian, <laughs> you, you, you got to meet Brian at the, uh, you were at the event, correct? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I met everyone, um, who was there and it was such an amazing experience. That was like, I came back home and I was like, the happiest person person on earth it was it was a great feeling meeting everyone in this group and uh meeting the coaches and uh giving everyone a hug i think i squeezed Chris. <laughs> yeah that's that's awesome I'm, I'm sad i wasn't I actually i was supposed to go to that one but it was uh scheduling conflicts and stuff but i will be at the next one i believe um, it's in, I, I don't, I don't want to say the date cause I don't know if I'm wrong, <laughs> but, um, okay. So, so let's, let's talk about you jumping into, into closers.io. So just to, to preface this for everyone that's listening, this is kind of a, you know, you hear this on our interview process and, and things like that, but it's actually harder to get a job with closers.io than it is to get into Harvard. That's how strict we are within, you know, this person has to be a culture fit. They have to have the work ethic. You know, they have to come with some sort of experience or some sort of, um, you know, prerequisites that says, Hey, this person is not only going to do what they need to, you know, they're going to completely buy into company vision. Like there's just a a ton of different things that you have to check off the boxes in order to, uh, to make it within the company, within closures.io. And, and Susan was able to, you know, to, to grab one of those spots. So, um, I, let's just talk about that. What is your, cause you've been on the team for about three weeks now, two, three weeks. Okay. Two weeks. So what has been the experience so far? Give us the good, bad, and the ugly. Um, learning a lot. Um, the ugly it's on my part. Um, I think when you go in a role and you know, um, the company has high standards, you want to, live up those high standards and then you might get in your head and then it's not going to turn out well so the first week was was pretty good um i did uh like three three programs of my sets got sold so that was a huge success and yeah. uh, i worked a lot i had a lot of dials and i think this is the most important and brian said that too like you don't have experience but you make up with your work ethic like, and that's why I had so many uh, sets and also they got sold, right? Um, so we could help people. And um, so the second week, I think I got a little in my head. You know, I had some struggles. I didn't know anymore what to ask. I was like, I need my script. I need my script. Bad choice. Uh-huh. And, um, and it took me over the weekend, it took me a lot of journaling, taking like walks, like, 
okay, why, why are you not asking the right questions? Why is it like trouble for you? And then I came to realization, like, first of all, I'm not raised like that. Like I was like, okay, do not ask questions. This is what my parents like, why? Yeah. You no, know, don't ask that, you know? So, but now I'm aware of that. So now I can work on that. If you're not aware why you, you are the way you are, you can work on that. So now I understand, um, not an issue, but what I have to work on and also, and also be more confident, you know, like, uh, you know, what is a good set. It doesn't matter what, what, how the outcome is. If you focus on the outcome, um, you're gonna mess it up, you know, like, so that was my experience. And, uh, the culture is, exactly the same I uh, I imagine I mean I know them from from RCA and uh, they are lions you know like mm -hmm. for me the first meeting <laughs> I was like oh wow there's like all the lions I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> you know? I'm like you should better be quiet <laughs> yeah. that was funny that was that's was my experience but um yeah I love I love the team and um yeah it's the best decision I've ever made. It's like a lot of it's. I think it's more challenging instead of going with another company which does not has as high standards as closest.io. Um, but it's like I'm growing so much faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and that's. I mean, when you're around, you know, the. I mean, you're around the coal, right? Created. The, the not created the, the sales process, but in a way, right, created a lot of the aspects that not only to train appointment setters, train closers. And when you're at like the peak of that, of the person that has created it, it's like, you, you know, you're going to get a well oiled machine. You know, I, you know, I talked to a lot of, um, you know, other companies and help them with more like, uh, you know, uh, of Cole's clients, right. Of people like with their social media and, and things like that. And it's, it's crazy to see, you know, not to, to downplay what people are doing cause everyone's on their own journey, but it's just, it's crazy to see how different the, uh, you know, the, the playing field is when you, you know, you, when you go down and, and see some of these other, these other cultures and the way that they do things. Um, you know, for you, like, or, you know, f not really coming from a ton of sales experience, right? Cause you, you, you saw the Instagram ad or you know, watched some of Cole's videos and you're like, all right, cool. Let's, let's jump into sales. Um, what would you maybe to say to someone that also doesn't have like a ton of experience and they're like, well, I don't have experience. Like, should this be something that I look into? Like, can I see success without uh, previous sales experience? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, if, if you, if you really dive into the material and you just do what the coaches say and do what Cole says uh, in the lectures, um, you will succeed. Like, I mean, of course, everyone is going to have like a, a phase where, where doubt comes in, fear comes in, right? But then you just have to remember why you're doing this. Why did you sign up for it in the first place? Because if you don't have a why, it doesn't make sense, right? It's super important. And um, I didn't have sales experience. I didn't like to talk. You know, I was like for a year in my little, in my little office and was doing the uh, CEO and quietly, you know, everything uh -huh. is quiet and now people are talking to me. So it doesn't matter. Like you just have to have the why do what they say and you will succeed. Like mm -hmm. th there's no doubt because this program gives you everything you need to succeed. It's always. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. You can give two people, you can get literally give them access to RCA and one of them, could literally do nothing and stick on their same path and the other could, you know, be in, in your shoes. And I think it's, it's really cool to see like, you know, even though that, you know, you denied a couple of those first offers, you kind of had that goal in mind of like, okay, we want to be on the closers team. Um, so it's like, even though you did get those offers, it's like, well, you, you still, you know, you, you landed what you wanted to, to at the end. Um, and, and you know, a lot of people that are listening, I think always ask about like the money aspect of like, well, how much money did you make? Right? Like that's the, you know, the biggest part for a lot of people. Um, I think what we'll end up doing is maybe like a, uh, like a follow up episode and we can talk maybe in like six months and see kind of where you are. But for those that are listening, um, cause I'm, I don't want to ask Susan cause you know, she's still getting up and running and stuff, but I will say, um, you know, the, the appointment setters that I've talked to again, remember this is like 
very little to, to no experience. Um, I mean, income potential could range from the low end, you know, $3,000 up to like 12, 15,000 with bonuses and, and things like that. And guys, keep in mind, like this is an entry level position, right? It's like the amount of time that you're going to spend on pretty much anything else that you do, except this is, you know, you, you really be able to grow into that. So I just wanted to add that really quickly for the ones that are like, all right, well, like how much money can you make? You know, um, it's so funny that you mentioned that my friend was like, um, I was so excited when, uh, when uh, one of my sets um, was sold and then she's like, okay, what is, what did you make? I'm like, I don't know, because I really don't, I didn't know and I didn't care, you know, I'm like, I'm where I am. I wanted to be here. I want to help. Like, I don't know what I'm going to get. I have no idea. I will see, because I think if you focus on the money, Mm. it's not going to be good. If you focus on being, okay, I'm here because I want to help, because I know it's going to help people, you're going to be so much better in setting or in closing. But if you're like, oh, how much am I going to get? And like, no, I don't want to know. Yeah. I will see next. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that honestly gave me chills because like you can, you can definitely tell when, when someone is about just the money, you know, when you're on a call with someone like it's, you know, in the industry, it's called commission breath, right? When, when you can tell like the person that you're talking to is old, like they're trying to sell you specifically for, for that. And you just even saying that is like, you can tell that like you are invested into the craft, you're invested into helping other people, you're invested into just getting better as, as a, you know, as a, a setter and a closer. So that's, I'm just really excited to see where, you know, the next couple of months, um, leads for you. It's, it's super exciting to see, and you're on the team. So I'll almost see like, it's really cool too. Cause you know, for those that are listening, um, we have an internal team team chat on Slack and anytime, um, you know, the first, I think it was the first close that you, that you dropped in there. Everyone was just going crazy. You're like, Susan, let's go. Um, and you know, it was really cool. And, and it actually was someone that came from Instagram too. So like that, you know, I, it's really cool for me to see. Cause a lot of times I'm kind of like, on the outskirts and I see like, you know, we're creating the content and it's like, Oh, someone came from Instagram. So it's, it's really awesome to see. Um, I know you have to go here in, in a second. So I guess any, any last words or, or parting words, something that you would say to someone that is on the fence and they're kind of thinking about it and they've maybe tried other programs in the past and they're scared or skeptical. Um, what would you maybe say to that person? Um, if you thought about it for a long time, just do it. Um, sign up for it. Uh, my experience is if you put in the work, you will succeed. There's, there's no doubt. You just have to put in the work, never give up. Fear comes in, be aware of it, just face it. You're going to have doubt along the process. It doesn't matter. Just go for it. You want to change your life. And uh, believe me, RCA program will help you with that. There we go. All right, guys, you heard... The words here from Susan, uh, first of all, again, thank you so much for coming on the episode. And uh, for those of you that are listening and you're like, okay, I want to check out a little bit more about RCA and maybe not even like, I don't want you to take this as, you know, if you click the link in the description or the bio here, it's going to, you know, you're going to get into a sales call. That's not it at all. But what I am saying, if you do click the description, it's going to bring you to another page. You're going to sh- watch a 15, 16 minute video that pretty much breaks down what remote closing is, um, how Cole was able to go from broke bartender making 1500 bucks a month um, up into, you know, make forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 within a 90 day period um, when first jumping into remote closing, kind of founding, uh, you know, this whole remote high ticket sales uh, realm as, as a remote closer. So if, uh, if that sounds interesting, obviously click the, uh, the link again, if you're listening on the podcast, it'll be in the show notes. If you're watching on YouTube, it'll be down in the description. And uh, again, Susan, once again, thanks for coming on. And uh, of course, Uh, All right, guys, enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you on the next episode of the Remote Closing Academy podcast. Aaron here, and we'll talk to you soon. Peace.